Hello and welcome to another TLC Tutoring Company accounting lesson. Uh, today we're going to be going over the multi-step income statement. Uh, you should be a little bit familiar with income statements in general up to this point. Uh, typically you have completed a single step income statement which would be the general revenues minus expenses equals net income. And typically we are going to be keeping those same elements. We're still going to have revenues and expenses and the difference between those two will still be net income. However, in this case, we are going to be doing it in a multi-step format, which is going to provide more information to internal users, uh, such as managers, as well as external users, like creditors and investors. So before we get started, let's take a look at our information section off to the right. We have our company, Capella Company, with the following account balances at the end of December 31st, 2025. Now, looking through this list, you'll notice that there are a few elements here, accounts, um, that are not going to appear on our income statement. Now, keep in mind, um, our income statement is only going to include revenues and expenses. So looking through here, cash, is that a revenue or an expense account? No, that's an asset. So that wouldn't even appear on our income statement. So the first thing I recommend you do is pausing this video and taking a look at these accounts and categorizing them into the appropriate um, elements or account types. So each one will be either asset, liability, capital, income, or expense. And keep in mind that there could also be contra accounts here. So try pausing that and seeing if you can categorize those appropriately. Okay, now that you've had a chance to attempt categorizing those, I'm going to put everything up here. Perfect. So now I went ahead and I categorized those, and I apologize for the colors, it might be a little hard to see, but it is really going to help us easily pick from this list what we want to deal with. Now you'll notice that we have two revenue accounts here. However, with our multi-step income statement, we are actually going to be separating out regular operating revenues and um, kind of other revenues. So in this case, Capella Company, um, let's say that they are a home design company, or not home design, that's more of a service. Let's say that they sell ah, widgets, let's make it easy. They sell widgets, and so I can tell you that rent revenue is not their typical operations. Um, typically, um, the only time rent revenue is going to be in operating revenue or regular day-to-day -day revenue that they see um, is when it's a real estate company that's primarily in the business of renting out their real estate. So in this case, this is an other revenue, and you'll see how we treat this over on our multi-step income statement. Now, you're also going to see these contra revenues, and these contra revenues are important, and they are contra revenues because they offset sales. So we have our sales here. However, some of these sales, um, we provided a discount and we received returns. So we have to deduct those out during our multi-step income statement. So let's go ahead and move over to our multi-step and let's start just like we would for any income statement by providing the company name, the statement we are working on, as well as for our date, for, for the year ended December 31st, 2025. Okay, now that we have our headers, let's jump right in. Now, just like with the single step income statement, the first thing to put uh, on our statement are those revenues. Now, remember what I was saying, the difference between our operating revenue and our other revenue. So we only want operating revenues at this point. So sales, that is the first thing that we are going to put up. We will deal with rent revenue later. So once we have our sales, we have to deduct out those two contra revenues. Now, notice that I'm putting a little colon here, which indicates I'm about to make a list. Now, uh, typically we are always going to put this in descending order. Um, however, it's, it's not exactly necessary to always do descending order, but the best treatment is to put them in descending order. And most likely your accounting software, if you do have an accounting software for your homework, they are going to want the biggest number first. So let's put our biggest number first, which is 10,000, and our sales discounts next for 6,000. Now, 
Notice here I put this in the left hand column and that is because I'm making a list which is exactly what that colon there also indicated. So lists will go in the left hand column and then once I do my math it'll go over into the right hand side. So let's do some math. 10,000 plus 6,000 that means I have a total of 16,000. Okay, next you're going to want to memorize some formulas for your multi-step income statement because this is a very important part of mastering this process. There are some formulas built in. So the first, first formula that you are going to want to learn is sales minus returns minus discounts equals net sales. So in this case, we have net sales of 184,000. Okay, the next formula you are going to want to learn is net sales minus cost of goods sold, also cost of merchandise sold, which is 107,000 in this case. Net sales minus cost of goods sold equals gross profit. There we go, and oh, let's get that bordering because I did some math. 184,000 minus 107,000 equals 77,000. Okay, now that we have our gross profit, let's move on to the next part, which is operating expenses. So keep in mind, we want our regular day-to-day -day operating expenses, and we typically see two categories of this, administrative expenses and selling expenses. Keep in mind that these are general categories, so usually what you're going to see is several expenses underneath each one. However, just for simplicity, I went ahead and I grouped those all together. So let's start with the biggest one first, which is administrative expenses. for 60,000 and then we'll add in our selling expenses for 20,000. Now you'll notice that when I totaled these up, these contra revenues, I put it off to the right hand side. It didn't get its own line. Now in this case, we actually have a name for the total of administrative and selling expenses and that would be total operating expenses. So it is going to get its very own line and title. Okay, now that we have our total operating expenses, we are ready to do a little bit more math. So the formula here is gross profit minus your total operating expenses. Well, that is going to give you your income from operations. Oh, red flag, we're in the negatives. So let's go ahead and see if maybe we can save ourselves with those other expenses. Now your other income and expenses, we actually have two here. I'm gonna make that a list since we have more than one. Okay, so we have two others. We have rent expense and we have interest expense. So let's start with the rent revenue since that's the largest absolute number for 4,000. And then right underneath that, we are going to have interest expense for 3,000. Now, um, typically you don't need to put this um, in negatives since we know an expense is negative. However, some financial statements do do it. So if your professor or your instructor typically does put this in negatives, go ahead and do that here. Now we do not have a formal name for this number. So we are just going to put it off to the right. It does not get its own line. So we have revenues, which are positive. And we have expenses, which are negative. So we are going to have to deduct the expenses from the revenues in order to get our answer here. Okay, so the net effect of our others is $1,000. And that is positive because revenue is more than expenses. Now, if we had more expenses than revenues, then we could put this in parentheses. However, since it's positive, we are going to be adding it. Okay. So let's go ahead and let's add 1,000 to that negative 3,000 that we had from before. And that gives us a negative 2,000. Now typically, income from operations, plus or minus, depending on the scenario, your others, that will give you net income. However, notice this is negative. So instead of writing net income, we have to write net loss. And keep in mind, not every, uh, not every year we might not have a net income. So it's important to note, if you get to the end of your, your uh, income statement and it is negative, then we have to change net income to 
net loss. Very important to keep in mind. Just to finish that up, let's do our bottom borders. Now other than that, the only other thing you might want to add in are some dollar signs to make it look nice. And um, once you have that, just keep practicing it. Do it several times until you've really mastered it. Try to find examples in your textbook. Um, if you do have any questions, please feel free to leave it in the comment section below. And in the meantime, happy studying.